Good evening. I call to order the Lake Havasu City Council regular meeting on Tuesday, November 26, 2019 at 6 p.m. We'll have an invocation by Pastor Dale Ray from Lakeview Community Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance from Gina Gertu Gutierrez, I even practiced it three times, uh, from Chillin and Swollen. So, uh, Pastor Ray. From the 100th Psalm, we read, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Precious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you, Lord, for your hand upon our lives. I thank you for this beautiful city that we dwell in. I thank you for the mayor and for the council members that serve us faithfully. And I ask that you would give them great wisdom in the decisions that need to be made. I ask for your hand of protection upon our police department, upon the fire personnel, upon all those that serve our city, that your name would be blessed and that they would be comforted and that they would be strengthened in carrying out the duties that they perform. So we give you thanks for this night, and we bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you. And Gina, if you want to share a little bit about what your organization does. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council, for the opportunity to talk to you about Chillin' and Swillin'. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization run strictly by volunteers. Uh, there are no paid organizers. All our vendors also donate all their products and their time. Earlier this month, we held our 15th annual beer tasting event. And since 2005, we've donated over $283,000 to various local charities in Lake Havasu City. We primarily focus on children, older adults, and people with special needs. Uh, we'd like to thank all of those in the community that volunteer their time and their, donate their services to Chill and Swollen, and we're looking forward to next year. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you for all that your organization does. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the roll call. Ms. Williams. Council members Cal Sheehy. Here. David Lane. Here. Jenny Coke. Here. Gordon Grote. Here. Michelle Lynn. Here. Donna McCoy. Here. Jim Dolan. Here. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is our uh, call to the public. This is the opportunity for citizens to address uh, the city council on any matter within the jurisdiction of the city. Uh, you would have three minutes or, or less at the call to the public. You can make your way to the podium. There is a light indicator box. Uh, green means you have time. Uh, yellow means you'd have one minute remaining, and red means that uh, the three minutes is up. Uh, we cannot have uh, a two-way conversation during the call to the public, so if uh, you are here to speak on an item that's on tonight's agenda, we encourage you to uh, wait until that time. So with that being said, um, Mike, do you have? would you like to make your way to the podium and just state your name for the uh, city clerk, please? Good evening. My name is Mike Mathers. I'm a resident of Lake Havasu. I've been for 20 plus years. I'm here to bring to your attention a situation of traffic control at uh, the corner of uh, Acoma and Saratoga. And Jess, I know you're aware of the accident that occurred with one of our residents when he was walking his dog. He was hit by a car and luckily didn't get killed. But So anyway, you guys put up a a three-way stop, which I thought was going to be the solution. Well, unfortunately, what I'm going to call to your attention is why it's not the solution. And the reason it, the problem that's occurring is because of the golf carts. So the golf carts are coming up behind the residents on that corner to cross the street. And uh, one of them was hit here a few weeks ago and actually totaled out the guy's golf cart, knocked both of them out of the cart into the street. Again, they survived. But I do offer a solution for that. As you're, the problem, as I see it, is there's 
a stop sign and then there's two lanes, one to stop and one to stop and turn. And it's the signs themselves are not terribly visible. So my thought would be to possibly get one of these sensors that you could put on Marshall's fence on his backyard that would sense a golf cart coming up that wash and would activate flashing lights around the stop signs that I have seen at different places, you know, throughout different cities in the country and, and could most likely be solar powered. It would not be a major cost other than the original installation, but that would bring to the attention of the, of the cars the fact that there was a golf cart in the area that would be stopping there or that would be wanting to, to pass. But I just think it's a, with all good intentions, it's just another accident waiting to happen. So if you get a chance to discuss and take a look at it, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lisa uh, Kruger. Good evening, Mayor Sheehy and council members. Tonight I am here, um, hopefully, to introduce some new members, but the members that RSVP'd I don't believe are in the audience. So I do, I will, if you don't mind, just take this opportunity to tell you who our new chamber members are. Some of them are not necessarily new businesses to Lake Havasu City, but they've either just joined or rejoined the chamber. So we have Custom Golf and Repair, Fat Beam, The Heat Hotel, Nico's Grill and Pub, Ohana Poke Bowl, Rachel and Jeff are not here. They were going to be here. Uh, Small Cakes, Cupcake, and Creamery. And I believe you all know that Tina Hayes is a new owner there. Veterans United Arizona with Frankie um, was going to be here tonight also. We also have Bridgewater Behavioral Health, which is a new mental health clinic. And Neighbors Assisted Living, and they have two locations in Lake Havasu City. So I'd like to welcome them to the chamber. And then I also would like to take this opportunity just to compliment the new Christmas decorations on McCulloch. They are really beautiful, and I'm hearing a lot of positive feedback. So thank you for doing that. It's a great improvement. Thank you all. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the City Council at the call to the public? Yeah, please just state your uh, name for the record. Okay, this is the first time I've been here. My name is James Campbell, 30-some-odd-year uh, visitor, now permanent resident of about 20 years. Just driving over here tonight. I, I came for a different idea, but this is what's on my mind. Driving over here this second time today, I was at a four-way stop. Somebody pulled out in front of me. The car next to me was going as well as I was. Obviously, our, our turn, right? Uh, they honked. That was the second time today somebody has violated me in traffic and honked. It's getting seriously bad here. I have been nearly killed two times, once on Main Street, by a truck that was speeding up the road as I was pulling out. He was going so fast, boom, he was right up on me. I looked out my window. It was about that far away. He swerved. By the grace of God, I swear, he did a 180, completed his 360, sped up the road, and ran red light right here by RPD, Linda Smith. <sighs> I hope he doesn't kill somebody. I have a friend who was dragged over 100 feet under a pickup truck by a guy trying to get away from a ticket. He was pronounced dead. He's not dead, but he's not feeling very good. That's all I have to say. I'm not mad. I'm very emotional right now. I'm getting tired of it. I value my life. I don't want to be in that hospital. Uh, I know somebody that was just there was not nice. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the city council during the call to the public? Seeing none, we'll close the call to the public. <clears throat> we'll move on to item six, which is the consent agenda. Would any of the council members like to remove any of the items on the consent agenda for separate discussion? Mayor? Yes. Motion? Yes. I move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Koch and a second from Councilmember uh, McCoy. Is there any further discussion? All right, uh, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item seven on the agenda is correspondence, communications, petitions, announcements, and the city manager report. 
Item 7.1 is announced vacancies on Lake Havasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. Ms. Williams. Mayor and City Council, there are a number of vacancies on Lake Havasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. The following is a listing of the current vacancies. Airport Advisory Board, one regular pilot member, and Board of Adjustment, three regular members and three alternate members. For people that are citizens that are interested in applying for one of these positions can pick up an application at City Hall and they are also available on the city's website. Thank you. Item 7.2 is the city manager's report. Mr. Knudsen. Yeah, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Vice Mayor uh, Dave, uh, David Lane and Councilmember Grote, Lynn and McCoy attended the Lake Havasu Association of Realtors 2020 Installation of Officers and Directors event. Vice uh, Mayor uh, Lane presented a certificate of appreciation to outgoing President uh, Mimi Lundy for her dedication and service to the community and the real estate industry and congratulated the incoming officers and directors. Uh, Mayor Sheehy and council members attended the Our Pampered Home groundbreak, uh, groundbreaking ceremony at the shops just a few weeks ago. And uh, Vice Mayor Lane, you also welcomed 30 Kaplan International students from across the globe here visiting ASU Lake Havasu City. Uh, Mayor Sheehy, uh, you proclaimed uh, Saturday, November 30th as Small Business Saturday in Lake Havasu City. To ca kick off the celebration, Lake Havasu City joined Lisa Kruger and the Lake Havasu Area Chamber of Commerce, a representative from the Better Business Bureau, and we all jumped into the uh, London Bridge Resort Fun Bus. Uh, we visited uh, 10 local small businesses in Lake Havasu City. Uh, Mayor Sheehy, you presented each business with a, with a certificate of appreciation for their contributions to our local economy and our community. Um, Steve Blake is our web service media coordinator. He captured the uh, tour on video and did an amazing job, and I'd like to show it to you. Now, therefore, I'm Cal Sheehy, Mayor of Lake Havasu City, Arizona, do hereby proclaim November 30th, 2019, as Small Business Saturday in Lake Havasu City. So we'll give this to uh, Lisa. <laughs>
Good one. Yeah, thank you, Steve. So that was just kind of a fun way to remind people that uh, Saturday is a small business Saturday and to uh, shop local and support our local businesses. <clears throat> The 17th annual community dinner is uh, is almost upon us. It's going to be on uh, Sat or excuse me Friday, December 13th. Uh, it's a lucky a lucky Friday for us all. Uh, there will be uh, two seatings at 4 p.m. and another one at uh, one at 4 p.m. and another one at uh, 6 p.m. And uh, we anticipate accommodating about a thousand guests at the uh, community dinner this year. The dinner is hosted by the community for the community and provides a relaxed atmosphere to share a traditional holiday feast with family, friends, and neighbors, and anyone who just wants a dose of great community spirit. The turkeys were donated, donated by the Tamarack Neighborhood Watch this year. Uh, you see a picture there with uh, Vice Mayor Elaine uh, giving uh, the, the dollars over to uh, Mike Keene and, and Parks as part of that uh, uh, donation for the, uh, for the turkeys. Um, they'll be prepared by Chagru's Restaurant and uh, there'll be a traditional ho uh, holiday feast prepared by professional chefs and with efforts of our WAVE culinary students will participate and help us out as well. The meal will include turkey, some ham, potatoes, gravy, stuffing, dinner rolls, vegetables, and a choice of pie for dessert. And we have uh, Santa be making a special appearance at both of the seatings for the kids. Uh, Picture Perfect Studio, excuse me, Picture Perfect Photography, sponsored by Anderson Auto Group, will be there for both screen, uh, both seatings to uh, take a uh, five by seven portrait and uh, for the families to take home for free. It's not too late to sign up to volunteer. If you'd like to help us out with the volunteering, please visit the website at lhcaz.gov. And the deadline to register is uh, Friday, December 6th. So a big uh, thank you to the Tamarack Neighborhood Watch and the volunteers that helped put this dinner on. If you have questions about the uh, dinner, um, please call our Parks and Recreation Department at 453-8686. On Saturday, December 14th, the day after the community dinner, from 8 a.m. to noon, Republic Services will hold our uh, Household Hazardous Waste Day event. It'll be located at the Public Works Maintenance Facility, located at 900 London Bridge Road. It's a, please uh, come out and take uh, advantage of this opportunity to dispose of uh, paint and auto parts, um, different uh, fluids such as motor oil, antifreeze, gasoline, uh, fluorescent uh, tubes, batteries, e-waste, bring your, uh, your, uh, your uh, TVs and, and monitors and, and those types of things uh, to, the, uh, to the event. Uh, we ask to don't uh, bring any uh, uh, pesticides or poisons, medical waste, those types of things, or uh, construction debris. But we're really hoping the community takes advantage of this event. The, the fire department was happy to celebrate Thanksgiving with a big thank you uh, from the uh, Havasu Regional Medical Center Auxiliary. The uh, auxiliary, auxiliary kicked off the Thanksgiving week with a $500 donation to the fire department to help restock our supply of res residential Knox boxes. The volunteers from CERT were on hand to receive the donation, as well as uh, Chief Davis and, and uh, uh, Division Chief uh, Scott Hartman, which was uh, delivered by the volunteers. Uh, the donation is appreciated by, uh, by the city, and many residents will benefit from, uh, from their kindness. And finally, the next coffee with the, the mayor and city manager will be on Friday, December 6th, from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. It'll be all held here in the city council chambers. Uh, Judge Mitch Kalali will be our host and guest speaker for the event. We were hoping to have it at the, uh, the courthouse, but uh, the space doesn't accommodate the uh, 100 or so uh, residents that show up for, uh, for the coffee. Uh, residents are, are encouraged to attend, express any issues, concerns, or questions, and, a, uh, and then uh, let everybody know that we'll have uh, the coffee in December, and then there'll be, we're going to take a break in January. So there'll be no coffee uh, with the mayor and manager in January. So after December, we'll be... Uh, um, on February 7th, 2020, right around the corner. Yeah. So with that, that concludes my report. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Vice Mayor Lane? Yes, if I may. Uh, first off, I just want to say how proud I am of the Tamarack Neighborhood Watch for stepping up and donating the uh, turkeys uh, for the holiday dinner. But um, I'm the captain of the Neighborhood Watch, so if, uh, it's my neighbors, and I'm very proud of them. But I want to give a, a big shout-out to our city manager, Jess Knutson. Although he doesn't live in our neighborhood, uh, he made a very sizable donation uh, as well to that fund. And uh, he won't toot his own horn, so I just want to say uh, thank you, Mr. Knudsen. Do any other members of the council have any questions for Mr. Knudsen? All right, seeing that, we'll move on to item 8, our public hearings. We'll start with item 8.1, adopt ordinance number 19, 
2023-1224, amending Lake Havasu City Code Section 3.20.040, Schedule of Fees and Service Charges and Updating Costs Recovered. Ms. Olson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this item before you is the adoption of the ordinance that was previously introduced to you a couple of months ago. Um, as we said at that time, the review of the fees and charges are required by our city code and, to be, and it's required to be done annually. Um, there are a few changes to the fees, but they're very small. Um, we applied a CPI of 1.9%, therefore none of the fees went up drastically. At the last council meeting, there was discussion as to how often the fees should be adjusted. Um, adjusting on an annual basis may be an inconvenience for some users of the fees. So staff is recommending that council review the fees on an annual basis, but apply CPI to the fees every two years only. So we'll apply it and leave, the, leave them the same the following year and wait till the next year to apply it again. That way, we should avoid any material adjustment by a cumulative effect of CPI for multiple, multiple years. And then every four years, a full study and adjustment of the fees would, would occur. So if that meets council's um, desire, then we can do it that way. Um, otherwise, the fee as indicated at the last meeting, all the fees are the same except for the youth camp fee, which we put back down to the $290. I'll answer any questions you may have. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Olson. Um, I am in favor of, of the schedule that you mentioned as far as reviewing the fees. Um, I think doing it every year just continues to have, you know, change is always is happening, and this allows us to do it in a very systematic way that doesn't impact the, the, the citizens that are having to pay those fees. So I, for one, am in favor of that. Uh, do any uh, members of the council have any questions for Ms. Olson? All right, uh, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Lane. Motion. Yes. I move to adopt ordinance number 19-1224, amending Lake Havasu City Code section 3.20.040, and updating costs recovered. Second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Lane and a second from Council Member Grote. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you, and thank you, Ms. Olson. Moving on to item 8.2, adopt ordinance number 19-1226, amending Lake Havasu City Code Section 5.20, vacation rentals. Ms. Gary. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This item was introduced at the last City Council meeting. Although there was a lot of discussion, there were no changes made to the proposed language, and so we're proposing it for adoption at this time. Um, I'm gonna go over a quick recap of what we talked about last time um, for anybody who wasn't here or missed it. Um, so this is a matter of statewide concern, which means the state uh, forms the regulations and the city can only regulate it to the extent allowed by the statute. So we have enacted every single tool that we possibly can and from the state, and so that's what we're posing in this ordinance. Um, some of the most significant changes, the city is going to require a local contact person that has to be available 24 seven when there's occupants in the vacation rental. That can be the owner themselves or somebody that they designate here locally, but they have to register that person here with the city. Um, the city is required to notify the Department of Revenue of any verified violations that occur of our short-term rentals um, regulations. Um, any of the short-term rentals may not be used for a special event that would otherwise require a permit or license um, by the city or the state. Um, there are certain fines that are outlined in the ordinance that are allowed by the statute. Um, of most note is the must, any owner of the short-term rental must have a transaction privilege tax license. They have to register with the state to obtain that and failure to do so will result in um, fines. And then also, once you receive your TPT or transaction privilege tax license, you have to include that number on every advertisement that you have of the short-term rental and failure to do so will also result in a violation. Um, those, are, those are the highlights. Um, staff is proposing the adoption of this ordinance. And if you have any questions or want to discuss anything further, I'm happy to do so at this time. Thank you. Do any members of the council have any questions for Ms. Gary? All right, seeing none, this is a public hearing. We will open the public hearing. 
If you could just state uh, your name for the record. And during the public hearing, you have five minutes. The light indicator box works the same as during the call to the public. Uh, Mayor, City Council, my name is Norman Stevens. I'm a 22 year resident and I got a Motel 6 next door to me and I don't like it. I'm uh, very glad to see that all of you have taken up this issue. Uh, I have contacted the governor's office, letter, phone, uh, have got one thing back from them stating that I could not see the governor personally. And, uh, you know, that didn't set too well with me. Um, but I offered to meet with whoever could address this issue. I have yet to hear from them. Uh, this is uh, something that I personally would like to see stopped. By stop meaning that no residential home can be rented on a short term basis, period. If they want to rent it for six months, a year, five years, that's fine. Because as being part of the neighborhood, if they're there for a period of time, you get to know them, however that works, and, and it usually works out for the best. Uh, but the short-term thing, no matter what you do, still is a disruption to the neighborhood. It's a disruption to the people who have it next door to you. So what you're doing is a step forward, but it's not the solution, in my opinion. Uh, I hope that this thing will go on. I personally would like to see um, the governor tail feathers fluffed a little bit, however you do that, by kicking or by <laughs> whatever. Uh, I'm not a person that deals too well with no's, and especially when it affects me. Uh, I've read every article I could read on this. Uh, this is statewide now. Even the Democrats, and if I'm stepping on toes, I'm sorry, but uh, they're against it. So that kind of lets you know where this is all at. And uh, I hope that this will stay in the forefront until something is settled. And in my opinion, settled means no short-term rentals in residential areas, period. Thank you, and thanks for your help. Yeah, thank you. Would anyone else like to address the city council? Good evening, my name is Nancy Campbell. Welcome, mayor and city council. One quick question. I've had a lot of people asking, what is considered short-term? How many days is considered short term? Is it 30 days? Is it anything less than 30 days? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would anyone else like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, so just as a reminder that what we're doing today is the final adoption of, of this ordinance um, and, and we're using the tools that the state has given us, which are, are limited. And we continue to work with our state legislature um, and our local delegation to be able to get some additional um, opportunities. Uh, Lake Havasu City is unique in that we had an ordinance from 2016 that worked really great, but it, it doesn't work anymore because it's against uh, uh, state law. So we're, we're still advocating to make sure that we have local control and can do what's right for Lake Havasu City. And we are making a little bit of progress. Um, Governor Ducey has uh, changed his position uh, just since uh, the summertime where he's now open to further discussion, which is uh, a big path forward from where he stood uh, last April when he signed this bill. So um, so we're working on it and we'll, we'll continue to do that. Um, does any members of council have any additional comments or questions? No? Okay. I'd like to make a motion? Yes. All right. I move to adopt ordinance number 19-1226, amending Lake Havasu City Code section 5.20, vacation rentals in its entirety. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Dolan and a second from Councilmember McCoy. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. 
All right, moving on to item 8.3 is approve a uh, cooperative purchase for tennis court resurfacing from Elite Sport Builders LLC. Mr. Keene. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The item before you tonight is to ask for approval of a contract with Elite Sports Builders to resurface the tennis courts located at the high school. In an intergovernmental agreement with the school district, it is agreed upon that the tennis courts be resurfaced periodically, and it's now time to do that. So the funds have been budgeted this year in the Parks and Recreation budget. And I appreciate your consideration in approving this contract. With that, I'll take any questions. Councilor Berlin? I just had a quick question. Yes. Are the gates open to the tennis courts like 24 hours? Or are they locked? They are locked in, uh, in the evenings and then unlocked. Uh, like, again is it after morning. school? Like, what's the time that they lock them? I believe they lock them more like 9 or 10 in the evening. Oh, they do? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, the tennis courts are, are part of uh, the city assets, if you will, to, through this agreement. So yes. they are open to the public. Vice Mayor Lane, did you have a... I was just going to say it might be a good time to remind the public as to the reason why the city is repaving the, the tennis courts that actually belong to the school district. Sure. Yeah, it's, uh, it is a, as part of the, joint, the public joint use uh, of the public properties. Um, the tennis courts are open to the public uh, most of the day, except for when the school, dis the school is utilizing them so themselves. Do any members of the council have any additional questions before we open the public hearing? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mayor? Yes. Motion? Yes. I move to approve the cooperative purchase for tennis court resurfacing from Elite Sports Builders, LLC, from City of Tucson's job order contract 192015, in the amount of $56,794. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Koch and a second from Councilmember Lynn. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keene. Moving on to item nine, uh, current events. Do any uh, council members have any council committee reports? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilmember uh, McCoy. I would just like to say that um, attending the WACOG, the sub-branch of the um, area on aging for our state, uh, I just wanted to remind people that are caregivers, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of information that you can get from the WACOG people about assistance and um, you know, classes, all kinds of wonderful things. So I think a lot of times we forget and we think that there aren't services out there. There are. And um, as always, though, the funding is cut or less than we would like. So things do get cut back. But it's good to check into it because they keep a waiting list for people. So I just wanted to remind everyone of that. And um, I also attended the uh, CVB, um, or Go Lake Havasu as it's now called, um, and I forgot all my paperwork, but everything is going great with that aspect. Lots of information. We've been in uh, um, all kinds of magazines that I'd never heard of before. So it was really great. People are reading and hearing about us. So um, that's my report. Excellent. Thank you. Do any other council members have a report? Um, I'll give a short report from the, Metro, uh, the Mojave County Water Authority. Uh, Council Member Groves and myself uh, went down to Parker uh, to testify um, about a hearing that the Arizona Department of Water Resources uh, was hosting. Uh, they hosted them on the Colorado River, one in Bullhead City, one in Parker, uh, one in Yuma, and then they also had one down in Phoenix. Um, Representative uh, Regina Cobb was there um, as well, um, and it was about water transfers off of uh, the Colorado River. Um, and we um, just stated our position that uh, um, Lake Havasu City, um, as opposed to any permanent water transfers of Colorado River water, um, and uh, we reiterated that uh, there, and it was a packed, uh, packed hearing room. So uh, we're continuing to stay focused on water and water resources in our area and uh, continue to, to remain focused on that. Um, any other council committee reports? All right, moving on to item 10. This is the final call to the public. Would anyone like to address uh, the city council on any matter within the jurisdiction of Lake Havasu City. Seeing none, we'll close the call, uh, the public hearing, or excuse me, the call to the public. Uh, item 11 is future meetings. Our next meeting is on Tuesday, December 10th, 2019 at 6 p.m. 
um, and that will be our final meeting actually of uh, 2019. The meeting on Tuesday, December 24th, uh, Christmas Eve has been canceled. I know, yeah, so our last meeting's on December 10th uh, for this year. Um, item 12 is uh, future discussion items. Do any members of the council have any future discussion items? No? All right, well, we wish everyone a, a very happy Thanksgiving and also remember to be kind from our kindness proclamation from last meeting. Um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And we have a motion and a second. Uh, we are adjourned.